Welcome back. We're in Tel Aviv's fashionable Dizengoff Street, where people come to see and be seen. And it seems to be a world away from Iran, where women's fashion has become a battleground since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. That's when religious authorities in the government first required that women wear long, loose coats and cover their hair. In fact, dark colors were made mandatory. Since then, religious police have cracked down on anyone who tries to oppose the official dress code. So the business of fashion in Iran must be extremely low-key. There is no advertising. Customers hear about designer clothing or fashion shows through words of mouth. Female fashion designers are doing their part to beautify women's dress, and others are trying to design Western-style fashions, but they can only be worn behind closed doors. Reza Saya reports from Tehran. No, this isn't a runway in Paris. And it's not a catwalk in New York. This is style taking center stage in Tehran, the capital of the Islamic Republic of Iran, in a country where Islamic law requires women to cover up, high fashion is flourishing behind closed doors. That is spectacular. Look at that. If you don't believe it, says Iranian designer Sadaf, check it out yourself. I think the only thing to say is they have to come and see. You can't really say anything else. They have to come and see. Sadaf is one of Iran's growing number of up-and-coming young fashion designers. As a child, she says she wanted to be an astronaut and visit the stars. Now stardom is coming to her in Iran's fashion scene. It's a great feeling. It's like an artist who paints and puts her work on display in a gallery. And when she comes and sees her painting on a wall and everyone else is looking at it, she enjoys it. I get that same enjoyment. Success for Sadaf came thanks to a blend of natural talent and eight years beating the odds. Remarkably, she has no professional training. In college, majoring in fashion design was not an option. Sadaf studied theater instead, designing sets and costumes. After college, when there were no more actors to design for, she designed for friends. From the first show I put on, which was very small and private, I knew I loved doing this. <laughs> like Dracula. Like Dracula, like Dracula, yes. Sadaf's theme for her latest line, fear and horror. And so that's why you chose the song Thriller in, yes, in your show. Yes. So, so because you wanted to scare people, yeah. a little horror fashion show. Yes. <laughs> Interesting, that is cool. Horrifying is how some might describe even the thought of being trendy in Tehran. After all here, women are required to wear hijab, Islamic cover, and Iranian fashion police are watching. Show too much hair or skin and the law says you can go to jail. Even so, walk the streets of Tehran and it won't take long to find flair, sophistication and style. I think Iranians are like the French. First, they want to make sure they have good clothes and their appearance is good, then comes everything else. They like to dress fashionably. Sure, they wear chadors, but underneath the chadors, they take care of their appearance. I think we have to make it longer. Longer? Yeah. Like this is the waistline. The challenge for Iran's young designers is to create fashion and style suitable for Iran's strict laws. We decided that we can design things to cover ourselves, but also those, those things to cover us can be cute and trendy. And how often do people order bright mantos? Making loose-fitting mantos trendy is not easy. Designers Hasti Pormars and Kazal Mogavar do it with color and design. Sadaf adds Iranian flair with antique patchwork. Oh, so you took this yes. material and, and put it here. Very good. We try our best to design like suitable clothes for women because we cannot wear that fashionable clothes that you see on fashion TV. At least not in public. 
In Tehran, seductive styles are only worn in private gatherings. Now this is something that will get attention no matter where it is. When pushing the envelope, Iran's designers have to make sure they don't break the law themselves. We live in a country where we have a set of rules and regulations and we have to follow those rules. And that's for anyone who's living in this country. And I've always done my work with those rules in mind. Among those rules, no fashion shows open to the public, no men allowed, and no advertising. It's enough to make designers in Iran feel like artists without a gallery. Nobody knows them. How are they supposed to know them? How are they supposed to know that I work here and Mrs. X is doing work on the other side of Tehran and her work is really good? Finding professional models is a challenge too. Models in Iran, we don't have those kind of professional models and for me it was difficult to get what I wanted and find models that were up to the standards I want for my work. But Iran's designers aren't just creative with clothes, they're inventive when putting on fashion shows too. They often use their friends for models, keep a tight lid on where their shows take place and keep the men away. Girls' Night Out, they call it, advertised by word of mouth. The first show that we've had, uh, we invited our friends and families, but the next one, they invited their friends and the friends invited their friends. And it's those friends who are the best customers. Stores don't carry these unique designs, so they're only sold to individuals. Despite the odds and obstacles, Iran's designers are steadily making strides. Nothing, nothing is impossible. impossible. <laughs> yes, nothing, nothing is impossible. Breaking barriers and shattering misconceptions. These stories need to be on the news. They have to be broadcast so people can get to know Iran. Putting Iran on the fashion map. For Inside the Middle East, Reza Seya, CNN, Tehran. Racing for peace and forging an unlikely friendship. That's right out of the break. Stay with us. <laughs>